الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين يا برد السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته and welcome to Islamic Voices Live uh, Brothers and sisters, subhanAllah, uh, we, it's, uh, we have had very special uh, guests on this show in the past, uh, whether from Syria, Somalia, uh, uh, and different parts of the Muslim world in general, uh, authors, thinkers, intellectuals, uh, people of very high caliber have been on this show and, 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 and have been discussing uh, issues uh, that really, really matter to this Ummah. Today, we have somewhere even more special. Uh, we have a scholar, a teacher, uh, uh, an activist, uh, a real scholar in, in, in his true uh, meaning, uh, f- directly live from Masjid al-Aqsa or from Al-Quds, which is where Masjid al-Aqsa is. Uh, we have today with us uh, Sheikh Isam Imara, uh, someone that I have actually spent a lot of time with when I was young in Palestine, uh, in Al-Quds. I saw his life very closely. I saw his work. I saw how busy he is in sincerity, in working with the Ummah, raising the, the, the flag of Islam, constantly bringing in the real, real issues uh, of that matters to this Ummah. Uh, standing and speaking the truth to whether it's the Yahud or is to the authorities, the so-called authorities today of of this of the Muslims, uh, making sure that the Muslims understand what's happening in in Asham and especially in Al Quds. Uh, he is a, he's a he's a he's an Imam retired now, but he was Imam of uh, Masjid Al Rahman. Uh, in Beit Safafa, which is outskirts of Al Quds, and I've been to that masjid when I was there. Uh, he speaks uh, very often and actively at Masjid Al Aqsa Al Mubarak itself. Many times he gives two different sessions in, in Jumas and uh, Ramadan and out of Ramadan in general. A lot, very active uh, scholar inside Al Quds and, and, and or and inside Masjid Al Aqsa. So we. Uh, could not, we had to make sure that he gets on this show one way or the other. Uh, and especially now with the events taking place again in Janin, the massacres that, just, that are taking place, we had to make sure that we bring a genuine, a scholar who will speak truthfully and uh, honestly and haq to, to those Yahud and to also to the authorities that are watching uh, the blood spilled of being spilled of the Muslims. So, with all of this, we would like to welcome Sheikh uh, Sam Imara to the show. Sheikh Sam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa ta'ala wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Kef Harak, how are you doing? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair for having me tonight. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. It's an honor to have you, Sheikh. It's an honor to have you. Uh, Wallah and I was just, just you. when I was looking at you, I was trying to figure out I need to go back and come and see you, inshallah. Yeah, Allah willing, bi'ithnillah ta'ala. Uh, we have, it's it's rare to be with uh, with the scholars, uh, real scholars of this ummah. So inshallah, Sheikh, uh, let's begin with this topic of what is, Sheikh, first of all, before we go to Janine, Give us the the the, uh, the events taking place in Palestine. What is what is happening here? What's going on with Palestine? What are the plots and plans? Just in you know in the next few minutes, so that we can get to understand what's what we need to understand and and why now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا رسول الله First of all I would like to send my salams to you and to your team and to all our viewers and uh, sending salam from the blessed land of Palestine from Al-Quds from Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and uh, passing a clear message that this land uh, has been 
occupy it by uh, the Kuffar, the non-Muslims, since 1917. Mm. Uh, the time where the British troops uh, in, invaded the, 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 the area and then they captured Al-Quds and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And since then, after the, uh, uh, the, the demolishing of the uh, Ottoman Khilafah, uh, where Palestine, the whole Palestine, and even the whole world, Islamic world, uh, became under the uh, sovereignty of the non-Muslims. Now, uh, this brings uh, the memory of uh, Salah al-Din, when uh, Al-Masjid al-Aqsa was controlled by the Crusaders. Now, the, the, the Al-Masjid al-Aqsa and Palestine, of course, uh, continued to be under the Crusades occupation for about 90 years. And at that time, uh, none of the Muslims were living in that in Al Quds, and all Muslims, all over the uh, that period, they thought continuously uh, uh, of liberating Palestine, and uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, helped Salah al Din to perform this perform this. Uh, uh, task and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa Al-Quds uh, is once again uh, under the Islamic uh, uh, sovereignty and control. Now Palestine today is uh, living under a very severe uh, circumstances because of the sovereignty of the Kuffar on uh, Palestine, on uh, Al-Quds, on Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa. And the uh, the uh, trouble and the main the main uh, I mean concern of uh, Muslims in Palestine is why you Muslims uh, uh, are leaving the uh, Palestine for Palestinians. This is this is our main concern because Palestinians cannot at all liberate Palestine from inside. You know, there is some resistance here, resistance there. We talk about Gaza, about Jenin, Nablus, sometimes other places. But the, uh, the serious issue is that Palestine cannot be liberated un un unless the Muslim troops move uh, collectively and uh, under the banner of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and liberate Palestine, liberate Al Quds. So, uh, meanwhile, uh, some Palestinians are um, uh, refusing to accept the occupation, refusing to accept the PNA, Palestine National Authority, uh, as being uh, the, the right hand for the Israelis. Now, this rejection is uh, expressed by, I don't want to call it minor fighting, but it is indeed minor fighting, minor uh, resistance, which the, the Jews, they, they look at it as major challenge uh, for them. That's why uh, every now and then, then they raid Gaza, uh, invade, kill, and arrest, and then uh, uh, withdraw. And they repeat this whenever they see it's necessary, and with the collaboration of the uh, Palestinian national or so called national authority. This is the situation as for Al Masjid Al Aqsa and the rest of Palestine. Sir, when you say, uh, so, the, the, the Muslims there now, I mean, you're saying, okay, fine, look, there, there has to be uh, an army that comes from outside. There is no other way to free Masjid al-Aqsa. And so, 
what is the role يعني, of the Muslims outside that they what role do they need to pray, you know, play to make this happen and, and num- that's number one and number two the, the issue of okay. let's say now Janine uh, you were saying that uh, the Yahud are uh, so worried just out of even small uh, uh, back and forth skirmishes that are happening if they if this makes them into if they make this into such a big concern which means yani uh, if a real resistance comes what will happen to this uh, so called uh, you know israeli state right in fact as for the first question we have we have uh, you we have to uh, go through uh, uh, sort of uh, a preparatory procedure preparatory step before mobilizing the Muslim armies to free uh, Palestine and Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and even to free Kashmir and other occupied uh, areas. This preparatory step is that to raise the uh, awareness of Muslims in general and the uh, uh, Muslim troops in particular raise their awareness uh, about the issue of liberating Palestine. And this, uh, this liberation cannot be performed unless there is a state, real Muslim state, that uh, uh, mobilized its forces uh, to perform this task. Because uh, throughout, say, 60, 70, 80, 90 years maybe, uh, these uh, states that uh, are uh, in the in the Islamic world, they do not have any uh, idea or any plan for uh, freeing Palestine and liberating Al Masjid Al Aqsa. They don't have they don't have it on their agenda, and uh, even their um, uh, their uh, their ministers, the the rulers, the ministers and the uh, 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 parliaments uh, and the general public, their media, uh, uh, also the thinkers there, the, 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 the writers, the, they do not, the, the elite, uh, mm. they do not have in their mind this idea that they are, the Palestine is part of the Islamic uh, world, the Palestinians are part of the Muslim Ummah, and they all belong to each other as brothers, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً This is a fact that all believers are one ummah. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً So they don't have this on, the, uh, uh, on their priority. They must have this uh, idea on the top of their agenda, the top priority. Once the awareness on this issue is increasing, is becoming uh, like public opinion, then the the, the people will start thinking, why are we keeping Palestine away from our unity? Why we are keeping Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa so far from Al-Masjid Al-Haram? They are twins, twins. Why they, we are keeping Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa so far from Al-Masjid Al-Nabawi? Why all Muslims cannot make Shadr Rihal uh, to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa and come? So the Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa has become almost a small place for prayer for uh, the, the people in Al-Quds. And maybe in Ramadan or Laylat Al-Qadr, they allow people to, from West Bank to come and they do not allow anybody from Gaza to come. So you can say Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa is a place, prayer place for Palestinians. This is, un, this is unacceptable. So once this becomes unacceptable for Muslims, once the, the, the detaching Palestine from the Muslim uh, lands is becoming unacceptable, slowly, slowly, people, their awareness will rise up and especially if they can convince the scholars, the, the Sharia scholars of Muslims, they are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of them. If their awareness reached up to the 
to the standard that they think positively from Islamic point of view of Palestine about Masjid al-Aqsa, then here we can hope that the second step can be performed, which is mobilizing the army. So first step is uh, logically, uh, I say, if, if any of the armies now decide to come and free Masjid al-Aqsa, ahlan wa sahlan, they are most welcome. But it is not likely to happen. What is likely to, to happen, more likely to happen, is that the awareness of the Muslims and the, in general, and the uh, army uh, troops in particular, is raised up to the standard that they, they make the liberation of Al-Masr al-Aqsa their issue, their concern, their top priority. Then they themselves decide to topple these rulers, get rid of them, and then establish the Khilafah state, make bay'ah, uh, uh, pledge of allegiance for to one person called Amir al-Mu'mineen. So, and we, we come back to our history again and uh, uh, renew the uh, ruling of Islam by Khalifa Muslim, who has, who rules a state and who commands the Amir al-Jihad, Amir al-Jihad, groups Muslims, then in, in, in no time, then they can fix the issue of Palestine. So this must be so publicized, so made so clear amongst uh, the Muslim community, Muslim scholars, Muslim troops. Sheikh, you, you, now, of course. second question, go, go. as for the second question, sorry, uh, uh, you mentioned something very interesting about uh, Gaza, about Jenin. Uh, with their so limited uh, capabilities, military capabilities, uh, they did wonders and they uh, uh, made the uh, Jewish entity uh, stand on its, you know, uh, what do you call? Uh, toes. Uh, toes, mm. right? Mm. Now, what if the uh, uh, Muslim Ummah mobilize its, its um, uh, troops, the uh, Pakistani nuclear weapons, the uh, Egyptian armies, the Turkish armies, uh, Jordanian armies, these, these uh, will, will, uh, will do miracles, not only wonders, and uh, they can rewrite the uh, Islamic military history uh, another time. Re, re, uh, rewrite the, the history in such a way that we remember Badr, Uhud, Khalid ibn Walid, Ali Yarmou, Hutteen, Salah al Din, and what have you. Subhanallah. Sheikh, a very uh, you know, specific question here regarding scholars, because you know, obviously you are a scholar, you are in Al Quds. Uh, what is the role of scholars now and if you were speaking to scholars now what you know what would you call them to what because you know we we of course you as you said yourself there's hundreds of thousands of sharia scholars uh anywhere you go into the muslim world you know uh, they obviously there are scholars there but for some reason like you said masjid al-aqsa is not on their agenda what happened, Sheikh, in this com, you know, in the Islamic uh, scholarship, that this concern has been made to put on a back burner somewhere? But small concerns, yani if you look at now in in, in Pakistan, yani the, the Shia Sunni are fighting on the border right now for the last two weeks. It was a whole mess that happened, and now Muharram is coming, and that uh, police is worried. The, you know, the, the the army is worried, and they're fighting and killing each other. Just sectarianism. But, I mean, is this a, a vision issue? Uh, are, are the scholars missing a vision? Is the ummah as a whole has lost the, its vision? Uh, and how big uh, part, uh, uh, you know, of the Islamic scholarship is it that they have made this ummah so, in, in many ways, handicapped? Mm. 
Yes, uh, I'm, uh, I'm sorry to, to say that this is true, uh, but this has not come, uh, you know, as something uh, so surprising. I mean, so uh, it's it's a lengthy, lengthy uh, process. Started from the destruction of the Khilafa, then they finished all those scholars who at that time refused to uh, to accept uh, Mustafa Kamal and his bunch of uh, uh, secularists and uh, they also refused to uh, detach some parts of uh, Muslim lands from the uh, Khilafah, the mother of, of, of them. So, so when, uh, after the, the killing of the Khilafah, uh, we had some scholars like, for example, uh, uh, the, the, the Deoband uh, mm. University scholars, uh, and then uh, uh, Sheikh al-Islam, Mustafa Sabri. Uh, actually, they objected very strongly, uh, but they, they were uh, uh, a minority mm. at that time, uh, unfortunately. And uh, the typhoon of the secularism, uh, you know, uh, swapped them from the road, from the way. Now, uh, after that, the uh, the universities and the uh, Sharia institutes, they uh, tailor-made some syllabuses to be taught to students uh, uh, without mentioning anything about politics or economics, mm. and then they uh, uh, they they uh, uh, raised a generation of uh, scholars who uh, are now ready to 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 become employees in the Sharia field not to become da'wah careers, not to become Islam defenders. They only took the Islamic culture to qualify them uh, employees in the uh, ministries of Awqaf or to become lecturers in the universities Sharia faculty uh, and never interfere in impacting the day-to-day -day life of Muslims in order to uh, to uh, set the records straight of behavior, behaviors of Muslims to become according to Sharia law. To Sharia law. Now they saw the the uh, banks uh, and the the, the riba. They never objected. They, they, they started thinking of Islamic banks. You know, mm. they are the other uh, face of the coin anyway. And they saw the uh, the loss of hijab amongst Muslim women. It didn't uh, uh, invite them to make inkar for this munkar. Because this is munkar, riba munkar, sufur is munkar. And then they, they saw the um, Muslim lands separated uh, uh, into what we now uh, uh, Arab uh, states, Muslim states, uh, autonomous. Uh, not, they, they, none of them ruled according to Sharia law. And they accepted to have more than one ruler on Muslims. And these are basics in, in, in Islam in Islamic culture is not to have two rulers uh, on the Muslim Ummah. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, إِذَا أَبُوِي عَلِي خَلِيفَتَيْنِ خَلِيفَتَيْنِ two khalifs, If you give pledge of allegiance to two persons and they are designated as Khalifas, then the second one must be killed. فَاقْتُلُوا الْآخِرَةِ مِنْهُمَا Because the Muslim Ummah is one Ummah and Muslim lands are one land and the Sharia law must rule. Now, who should 
discover this trick which we fill in the uh, scholars why the scholars are uh, taking aside mm. and they do not face this bunker because of so many reasons on top of these uh, not only not fearing from uh, the, the rulers or the Mahabharat. no this is not the, the, the issue but because their uh, education mm. Uh, so, is, is, so is it ideological, Sheikh? I mean, is it, you know, because my next question to you was, you know, how is it that, you know, the secular thought process, why did it take such deep roots within the elite, uh, you know, the educated elite of the Muslims, uh, starting with the scholars? Yeah. What the syllabuses. Syllabuses. Yes, yeah, syllabuses. The... the they go to universities and they learn what the rulers want them to learn. So they are excellent in al-wudu and al-salah and ahkam al-zakah, hajj, these things. They are brilliant when, when talking about, uh, uh, say, Islamic istighfar and tawbah and sabr and all these things. They are brilliant. They, they, they know all the, uh, the texts um, uh, relating to these issues. But when, when you uh, introduce, for example, this Khilafah issue, the uh, ruling, uh, the independent, real independence, the uh, 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 relationship with the sort of, so uh, the, for example, the uh, uh, United Nations mm. and the they uh, receive the uh, Americans and the British, the French, they make relationship with them and they uh, re receive their instructions and then up implement them. They say, oh, no way. Then they are in trouble because the, the idea of uh, separating Iman from Kufr is not so clear in their minds. They say, maybe, and, you know, let's... Uh, take it gradually and then you know they are stronger than us and they, they employ the logic and the mental uh, uh, what sort of um, gaps maybe it seems to be not, yeah. not mental gaps they, 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 they play it mentally not sharia sharia law if, you, they, if, if they play it sharia from Sharia point of view, then the the, the control is there. The, the issue is halal or haram. Mm. But if they uh, play it logically, then uh, you have to wait, you know, we have to accept, to be realistic, and all these things, they are not from Sharia. Then when someone asked me about this, be, be realistic. I told him, impossible. <laughs> I cannot at all be realistic. Because if you, are, if you are realistic, then you have to say, America is the strongest power on earth. Then we have to give salute salam to America. Hmm. This is, this is the real. Uh, but if you are shari and you think from halal and haram, and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, Allah is stronger than America then we have to be with Allah against America. Ah. Then things start, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, arranged, being arranged according to Sharia uh, point of view, not according to logic or to the men mental or to emotions. We, we, these scholars must raise their understanding of Islam, they are scholars, no, no doubt about it, but they must add to their education something relating to the sovereignty of Islam and uh, connect Muslim Ummah to the next day, to Al-Akhirah, to Al-Jannah, and then make them fear An-Nar, not fear America, fear Jahannam and not to to uh, to go and 
spend your whole life in uh, gathering money or building a house or uh, looking after a wife or two or three. No, put higher aims to this the is Ummah. Really Subhanallah, Sheikh, this is very important. High, uh, but tell me, is uh, when you say that we have to have higher aims, uh, of course, I'm here uh, just speaking to as a student of knowledge. W- what, uh, what, uh, what gives you that type of aim when we say that our aims must be higher? Uh, it, what uh, kind of work needs to be done in order to raise that understanding that the you know, that we have a vision much more than the vision that we have been given today, right? You were saying, look, just the dunya, have one or two cars, wives, uh, a building here and there and a home, whatever. But the idea that the Muslim Ummah can be rulers one more time. I mean, I guess if you could just give me a little bit of understanding what had to happen for men like Salah Ad-Din to come around. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, we are losing... Uh, I mean uh, the uh, the vision of uh, imitating Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Sunnah of the Prophet. Uh, the Sunnah and the uh, yani, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam from the first day that he carried this da'wah, he um, uh, told Quraysh people, community, that if you say La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, then you will uh, take control of all Arabs and the non-Arabs. Sovereignty in the dunya. Quru la ilaha illallah Tuflihu. And this was uh, Tuflihu uh, and, and then Tamlikuna uh, al-Arab wal-Ajam. You know what? Tamlikuna al-Arab wal-Ajam is that you will be uh, rulers on Arabs and non-Arabs. Tamlikuna, from Mulk. Mulk, yeah, yeah. Yes, and then he told them, if you say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, then you will go to Jannah. And it, all the time he connected their minds with Jannah. Whatever you get in this dunya, in, uh, it will look, so tiny comparing to what will, you will get in Jannah and whatever you have you know you uh, uh, pass through uh, hardships in dunya it will look so tiny and small compared with the torture in Jahannam you know Connecting people with the, uh, the day after the agenda, with the agenda, with the nar, raises the aims of the ummah. So, uh, <laughs> for example, Umayr ibn al-Hamam, <laughs> radiyallahu an, in uh, Badr battle, you know, uh, when uh, Rasulullah said, مَا بَيْنَ أَحَدُكُمْ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا أَنْ يُقَاتِلَ فَيُقْتَلْ So, uh, uh, the, the distance between uh, any of you and the Jannah is to fight and be killed. That's it. You know, so quick. Umayr ibn al-Hamam, when he thought of this, he immediately threw, threw the uh, dates. He was eating some dates. He said, it is a very long, long life for me before going to Jannah is to eat these dates and, you know, then brush my uh, to after that, and wash my hands, and it takes time. No, I don't want them. So he threw them and then involved himself in uh, the fighting of the kuffar, and he was he, he got the shahada. He got the shahada because, because he, uh, uh, I mean, uh, accepted the uh, saying of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam took it too much to heart, and then he immediately uh, acted accordingly. Today, even our scholars of Sharia, they teach us the, the uh, Sharia, and uh, and they do, they do not abide by it. 
So how would you expect the layman to agree to that and abide by that? So we, we lost the uh, vision. Our, our compass is uh, wrongly directed. That's why you see m most Muslims are not committed to Islam. Some of them may practice Islam. And I keep... Sorry. S sorry about that. No, I, keep, I keep telling to uh, some, uh, you know, Muslims I meet in, in, in the street, in the Masjid al -Aqsa. I tell them, are you sure? Are you sure? You are part of this Muslim Ummah. Anyone who looks from outside at you, will he say that you are under occupation? You are uh, playing cards and playing football, uh, practicing sports, and you uh, build houses, and then you make your uh, parties, you know, when they get married, they make parties unbelievable, you know. You don't feel that these people are under occupation. Mm -hmm. You don't feel that these people are, you, they belong to the Muslim Ummah. I don't, I don't want to say they are kuffar. They are not. They are Muslims. But they do not behave like Muslims. So this is, the, this is what we lack in the, in the uh, um, uh, education of our scholars. And we lack it also in the lectures and the preachers of our scholars to Muslim Ummah. That's why the situation is so, so fragile, shaky, Islamic-wise. Sheikh, uh, this may be a little bit personal. I mean, you've been to prison many times. Uh, I know that uh, many times I've, I've, I've always heard that either you've been taken in front of a, this judge or that judge. Sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a Israeli judge and this. Sheikh, tell me a little bit about your experiences while you were in prison. Uh, I remember one time you were in prison the whole Ramadan. Uh, and then... And I, I remember that very well, uh, you know, because obviously I was, in, I was in contact with you directly, but I had spent time. T tell me a little bit, Sheikh, as, as a scholar, I mean, for me as a student of knowledge, if I'm studying under you, then you are an example for me. You were just talking about how the scholars themselves need to be examples because they say something. This is, I wanted you to, if you can emphasize first uh, uh, some of your experiences in these jails and the reasons for why you went there and what the scholars should understand when they see scholars such as you taking these stands and being in uh, these areas of occupation. In fact, uh, the first experience in prison and the, the longest was with the was not with the Jews, was with the uh, uh, PNA group, and then uh, because of khutbah, I gave in Al Khalil Hebrew. Yes. And I mentioned something about the uh, uh, the uh, the organizations in Palestine like Fatah and all these people who changed their route from liberating Palestine into uh, handing over Palestine to the Jews. Accepting the occupation. And then that, that khutbah actually was a uh, caution, caution given to Hamas and Jihad, is that don't follow Fatah and the other, uh, you know, sanctions uh, uh, in their steps. Don't follow their footsteps. Otherwise, yeah. you will end up in the same place. And this is exactly what happened. Yeah, we Fatah, see them. Yes, yes. Fatah ended up in, in Ramallah as rulers and Hamas ended up in Gaza yeah. as rulers. So, and the idea of liberating the whole Palestine now is over. Uh, they both accepted the uh, Israeli state, the Jewish entity, on uh, the major part on eight, 
uh, on 78% of Palestine, and they accepted only 22% divided into two, West Bank and Gaza. Actually, this um, uh, created some anger in, uh, in, uh, uh, in their minds and hearts, and they uh, decided to uh, arrest me, capture me, and put me in jail. Uh, to your surprise, in, uh, it, it was not uh, 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 so bad in, in jail. <laughs> uh, in fact, um, uh, all these officers who were, you know, guards or, uh, you know, servants there, they keep asking me about their work. Is it halal or haram? And they, uh, yes, and then uh, uh, some uh, uh, high ranks officers, uh, they confessed to me that uh, they were bad, bad people and they, uh, they are uh, doing wrong things and they do not know how they became so officers in this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, arrest, arresting their own people instead of fighting their enemies. And uh, it was uh, a period of uh, discussions, and it was so fruitful, by the way. Now, when we talk about, because we talk Muslims, but when we, you talk about the prison in, in, in the, uh, the Jewish side, it's completely different. They did not accuse me of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what you call... Uh, uh, fighting them or resisting them or no they said you talk and then you create problems to us by your talk so they 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 are unhappy with my words mm. imagine now imagine, imagine how mm. yes yeah and the, the, now uh, they sent me to court uh, first time, second time, time, and now third time is in two two months uh, time in September. Just because of these words, they say your words create problems to us, not from you, from people who hear you. See, which, which they call it in in, in Arabic tahrid. <laughs> I don't know the, the right English word for that. <laughs> the effects of your words on the people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This is now, or, or, this is now uh, the, the charge. May Allah protect you, Sheikh. Sheikh, Allah. Sheikh the, 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 one, one, one thing, go ahead. Yeah, one, one thing is interesting in, in this uh, court issue with the Jews is that the last time the uh, the uh, what the, what you call them, uh, attorney general maybe, or the judge, or they they uh, asked my lawyer. They said this sheikh is different. W where is the camera? W where are the cameras? Where are the journalists? No one no one came with him to the court. Only his son, just to you know, <laughs> to drive him to the court and take him back home. How, how, where are the cameras? They, 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 what, where are the journalists? Where are the people who chant, you know, Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh? No one was there. It was so quiet. And they were so surprised with that, you know, because we, we are not, uh, we are not seeking uh, any propaganda. Mm. Any, uh, this is not so to show we, off, yeah, subhanAllah. Not show off, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Yani, shaykh, subhanAllah, shaykh, yani, this is... Uh, but uh, what... Shaykh, it's one thing to be under occupation. Uh, I mean, but give me a little bit as a scholar. You have been there all of your life in Palestine. At least since at least I've known you've, you've, you've not left Palestine. I mean, you go in and out, but... You've been there, uh, you were born in Palestine. Yes, and lived there until the age of 22. And okay. then I spent, spent about 17 years in Kuwait. Mm. Uh, and, those, and those years were so beneficial for me because I got, 
across this dawa in Kuwait. Subhanallah. So you met uh, with, yeah. uh, you, so, and then it, so, and then the work happened in Kuwait, and then I know you were also in Saudi, and then you came back here. It seems like you went back to Palestine. Uh, before that, well, uh, one, yeah, I mean, stationed for two years in, in Jordan. Uh huh. Because of your work as yeah. you're an accountant, it seems. Uh, <laughs> not only accountant, but I'm um, a training officer in wow. commercial study. Commercial studies. Oh, subhanAllah. So you're not just yeah, a scholar, is, but you're... This you're... is my specialty. Huh. So you, where did you study, Sheikh? In, uh, in Kuwait? Commerce. Or? Commerce. Commerce in uh, college in Al-Quds. Allah Akbar. Okay, so then uh, and then you continued on your... So Sheikh, uh, did you ever think about leaving Palestine? I mean, there's so many people who just left Palestine. They said, ah, what are we going to do there? Never, never. You know, I, I had uh, uh, two or three opportunities to, to live outside Palestine. One was in Australia. Oh. Yes, uh, they offered me a job there and they said, you come here, you become Australian subject and I, alhamdulillah. Then the other one was in, uh, uh, in Chicago. Oh. <laughs> yes, they want. They offered me a job, in, as khatib and imam in one of the uh, mosques of Chicago, and they said you stay with us. You know they can. They wanted to. I mean, uh, utilize. Mm. You know this, my charisma as uh, khatib. So this is important, I think, in in. Uh, not only in USA, everywhere in the West. So they, want, they can collect uh, money from uh, audience more for the attractive khatib. Raise funds, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is exactly what happened. And then, then I refused, actually. And I had another opportunity. The third one was in Sweden. In Sweden. But you did, you did not... And you said, no, I'm not going back. I'm staying in Palestine, no matter what happens. Yes. SubhanAllah. Sheikh, there are a few other questions that are coming here. The question here is that why, why did the attempt to liberate Palestine in the 20th century fail? Although there are many states which participated in the, I don't know if it's United Front, but that's the question. Is that, is this... What is your observation of this? First of all, uh, I'm sorry to, to uh, uh, amend or make some amendment to the question. Yes, United there Front never no, happened. Sorry, Zakallah khair. There were no uh, uh, serious attempts to, liber to liberate Palestine. Hmm. No, we don't say that there were attempts, but they failed. No. There were no attempts to liberate Palestine. All the military activities that took place since uh, the uh, since the fall of Palestine under the British mandate in 1917 until today, there were no real attempt to. Uh, uh, liberate Palestine or to free Al-Quds whatsoever. Those military activities were uh, part of the plan to uh, establish the Jewish entity and then keep guarding this entity and then strengthening this entity up to the uh, standard you now see. Everybody says this is the strongest entity in the area. No one can uh, involve into a, a war, real war with that entity. They have nucle nuclear weapons. And what you f see uh, uh, from uh, Lebanon side, Hezbollah, or from other sides, resistance, is something so, uh, I mean, 
orchestrated mm. Mm. in such a way to look resistance, but in its real understanding or meaning is part of the game. Um. Now, to, to give example, Hezbollah in Lebanon, people at one stage, they said, oh, Hezbollah will do miracles. Hezbollah has rockets. Hezbollah, he hit the entity. Hezbollah, Hezbollah. Uh, Hassan Nasrallah, Hassan. They, they, they chanted Hassan Nasrallah in Palestine, and they called him the eagle of uh, Lebanon. Mm. What is Hassan Nasrallah or Hezbollah doing today, last week, a few days ago? He is angry that uh, a, a village called Al Ghajar, village called Al Ghajar, at the borders of Lebanon with the entity, the Jewish entity. And then the, the Jews, they took the, uh, the, the other side of the village. You're talking about maybe one square kilometer, even less. They annexed it to the uh, um, part of the uh, Al Ghazar village with them. And so the whole Al Ghazar village now has become under the control of the Jews. So they changed the fence between the Jewish entity and the Lebanon borders a <laughs> little bit. So Hassan Nasrallah said, oh, this is a crime. This is against the international law. This is, this is, this is. The Jews must withdraw them from this one square, square kilometer. This is rubbish. Sorry for the, the expression. This is uh, 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 treachery for the, for the Palestinians, for the Lebanese uh, lands and issues and people. How can that they do? How do they think, these people? And still, people, they say, oh, they are the strongest, uh, you know, uh, faction and of the, they have uh, 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 rockets that they, you know, one day they will come and liberate Palestine. This is all propaganda, I mean, or uh, the media work that reflects, I mean, I don't want to say reflect, but I want to say this is uh, diverting. Yeah. Mm. Huh? It's this, perpetrated. Uh, it's very specifically it's designed to. Correct. Mm. So I think it's high time that people understand what's going on. Chef, we need the, to keep talking. Uh, there, there's two things. I want to come. There's a few questions here, but one of them also, you differentiated between Dawa carriers and employees of the government. Yes. When you say, uh, and then you also talked about commitment of the scholars to this cause. Uh, uh, Sheikh, w how do you differentiate between what is the dawah carrier versus uh, an employee or a, of the state? I mean, yeah, yeah that's. I think they, they consider themselves to be dawah carriers. Oh, they are scholars. No, no, no. Never, 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 never. Even they, uh, some of them, they say we are dawah carriers, but they are not. No, no. In fact, the dawah career is that a, a man or woman who take the load, the heavy load of establishing Islam on earth and put this load on his shoulders. Mm. This you can say dawah career. But if you find someone who says, move from one place to another calling for Islam, foreign kuffar to come to Islam, or calling for Muslims to pray, or to fast, or to give their zakah, or to build more masjid, masajid. This is not da'wah kari. No. This is calling for uh, some part of Islam, and I call it is you are operating by some Islamic laws, but you are not operating for Islam. Mm. There's a difference between operating by Islam and operating for Islam. Now, what is, operating by Islam is something allowed by the governments. But operating for Islam, to bring Islam into life, to bring Islam into uh, the... Uh, put the Amir Mumineen in the chair in place of these, all these rulers, this is, you are operating, you are working for Islam. 
then you are the our career. And you look at the situation, the situation is not Islamically uh, designed. It's a designed uh, capitalist, designed maslaha, designed uh, 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 separation, not uh, a separatism, uh, not, uh, uh, I mean, we, our efforts are not collective. Uh, Muslim Ummah is, you know, divided. Uh, 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 forget all about this Shia Sunni issue is, uh, you know, it's uh, out of our discussion. But Muslims themselves, they are divided, divided. So Dawah careers thinks of all the time, thinks and operates in order to get the Ummah, bring the Ummah again as one Ummah, uni uh, unify the lands. Uh, uh, unifying the governments, make one government for this is da'wah career. Others, they are not da'wah careers. They operate, they work for uh, by the allowed part of Islam. Sheikh, so so what do you have to say to those scholars that you know, for instance, they use, uh, you know, I think uh, illegally, or this is not meaning they use Ibn Taymiyyah and uh, Hanbali school and all of this. Uh, to uh, to legitimize the rulers of today, and then when you yeah. ask them questions, they say, "Oh, you know, they, they'll." They, what do you, and they're very common. They're because they are very famous uh, in in here in in the U.S. and many places. Sheikh, do they not see oppression? Do they not see the situation of Palestine? Do they not see the promotion of fitna and? And, and, and all of this nonsense in Saudi and all of these other places where you see filth, where the youth ha have been made to dance naked on the streets of Riyadh and, and Jeddah. Sheikh, I mean, and then they say, no, you cannot speak against that. This is against. And then they use Ibn Taymiyyah, as I said. Sheikh, was Ibn Taymiyyah ever like this? Never, never. Actually, for the last 40, 50 years, we are... Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we are living or we passed through a, a, a fiqh catastrophe. Hmm. This fiqh catastrophe is the obedience of Wali al Amr. This is legitimizing Ibn Salman, legitimizing uh, Al Hassan Thani in Al Maghrib, legitimizing. Mahmoud Abbas legitimizing King Abdullah of Jordan legitimizing Nawaz Sharif or, and these people as a Muslim rulers. And if you go to the catastrophe, in fact, they should uh, think of one point who is the Wali al Amr that we need to obey. Who? You need to, to have a definition for this Wali al-Amr. Definition, the definition comes from uh, the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, ati'u allaha wa ati'u al-rasoola wa uli al-amri minkum. This is the first part of the ayah. Oh, you believe, obey Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala, obey the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who, uh, those of the rulers who uh, are uh, appointed as your rulers, as long as they obey Allah and obey Rasulullah. If they do, then their obedience is a must, is far. If they don't, then there is no obedience. Because the second part of the ayah mm. in Surah An-Nisa, فَإِن تَنَازَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ And if you, for example, if you dispute on any matter. Now the dispute here, uh, uh, based on the uh, sequence of the ayah, is between the ummah and the rulers. Hmm. If, the, if you dispute with them, 
those rulers on any matter فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول فردوه is refer it to Allah and to the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the condition there إن كنتم مؤمنين مؤمنين so this is part and parcel of the Iman is to obey Allah to obey Rasulullah and to obey those rulers as long as they obey Allah and Rasulullah if they do not totally or partially and you dispute with them on that then refer it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to Rasulullah because you are believers now the question is are do our rulers obey Allah and obey Rasulullah and rule us according to Sharia law? This is the question. Anyone can answer this question. Any, not only a scholar, any Muslim. They mm -hmm. say no, and they came, once they say no, they immediately say but. Mm -hmm. If they say yeah, no, but. Now, no but is equal to yes but. Yes but means this but is, you know, cancels whatever you said yes about it. The no but, the but here cancels all what you said no about. You should say yes they do or no they don't. The answer is no they don't, without but. Once you say but means you are now starting to giving uh, what you say uh, excuses. Uh, excuses legitimizing uh, the rules legitimizing you know trying to um, make some compromise mm. right there is no compromise between ruling by sharia and not ruling by sharia either you rule by sharia or you don't rule by sharia. Sheikh, you said this has been a disaster for fiqh for the last 50 years yes. is this does this come from not understanding usul al-fiqh is this like i mean for instance what you said you know atiyu allah wa atiyu rasul wa ulil al amr minkum fa idha tanazatum faruddu ila allah wa intanazatum faruddu ila allah wa rasuli if you look at usuli issues then this means that this is the the priorities you Allah Rasul walul amra minkum and then if not then one two three I mean this itself is usul how to obey yani, what needs to happen for a skull and for a ruler or for anybody who does not and then what is the punishment or what you as Muslims do to someone who is not uh, uh, you know obeying Allah and his Rasul but when you say that this is a fiqh disaster do you mean that they were uh, 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 branches or certain type of insertions made in the usul that this type of confusion has appeared? Actually, this confusion, not only in usul fiqh, it is in usul deen. Mm. You know, when I said for the last 40, 50 years, uh, I mean the Salafi, Salafi issue. Mm. which started in, in, uh, in the uh, Arabian uh, Peninsula. And uh, uh, simultaneously, there's the Shia Khomeini uh, thing came out, this Ithnaya Hashariya. And these two um, main uh, uh, sort of aggressions on Usul al-Din and Usul al-Fiqh, they uh, uh, drove us, drove Muslims into the situation, this catastrophe, this catastrophe, because neither Salafis nor Shi'is, they uh, have any uh, uh, clear, clear usul. vision yeah. of clear usul deen, not only usul fiqh, mm. usul deen. Now they, they, they mentioned something about this bid'ah and about this uh, uh, obedience and about that. They, they want to legitimize the uh, ruling of Saudi family. And the, those in the Ashriya, they wanted to legitimize Khomeini and his, uh, uh, you know, uh, 
mullahs in, in Iran. Now, these two, both of them, uh, they, they, they grew up under the uh, patronage of the uh, West, especially the Americans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, 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 they accepted now, even very clearly. They said, oh, we yes, needed very that. clear now, yeah. nowadays, today. And, and, and uh, to, to, to everybody's surprise now that the Saudis and the Iranians are getting uh, closer. Uh, closer. Mm. And they said they exchanged uh, embassies. ambassadors, yeah. embassies, ambassadors, and they say we are, we are not at any conflict. From, for the last 30, 40, 50 years, you were, uh, I mean, boiling the situation. You kept saying, there al Shia, Rafidi, Rafidi, Abu Bakr, Aisha, Umm al Mumineen, these people. And the others, they said, no, Nawasib, Nawasib, Rawafid. Between Nawasib and Rawafid, now the Ummah is now, you know, uh, getting, uh, what do you call, uh, a puzzled. <laughs> you have people in Egypt or in Saudi or in Qatar, they're still negotiating and debating. And there's one word that I can pass to them is please stop all these uh, discussions and debates because this conflict can never be solved unless Amir al Mu'minin is there. Once Amir al Mu'minin is there, then he adopts something in Al Aqidah, adopts something in Al Ahkam, and he, he made it as a law. So, what the name themselves and Sunni will obey by hook or crook, as they say. And the, the, those who call themselves Shi'i, they will obey by hook or crook and by, the, by law. Now you are wasting time and you are increasing the gap between Sheikh, Muslims. This is, this, this is so, also part of Maslaha, right? I mean, this was done, it seems like, by Maslaha, by design. Just like you were saying that many factions in Palestine by design at the end just basically just went away. The whole resistance stopped, occupation still con con continues. Thousands, if not, you know, hundreds of thousands of people were killed in these conflicts. And now you have these situations between Iran and, and Saudi, this, uh, you know, Najdi Salafia, let's put it this way, and, and this uh, Shia situation in Iran and all of this. Again, thousands of people die, co conflict begins. These are, uh, 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 I mean, it seems like it's very well put together by design. It happens until the time needed, and then khalas is dissolved. But now the rulers come together, drink tea on the dead bodies of sincere people who at least were sincere in what they believed. That's true. And you can add to that uh, not only the intellectual conflict, also the military conflict and the Daesh and, uh, you know, what have you of these yes, now. Yes. So it's uh, unfortunately, it's a big uh, trick played on Muslims. Muslims must be uh, awake, uh, awakened and they, they must understand what is going on. Okay, Sheikh, now here's maybe two or three more questions. Awakening takes awareness, right? Awareness of certain things. A lot of people, they read, they are aware, right? They may be reading newspapers, they may be reading books, they may be, they are aware. It's not that, the, you know, but the, the, it doesn't uh, make them move. It doesn't, a lot of people read, but, but they don't understand things the way they should be understood. And on one hand, we don't have the institutions, we, uh, you know, uh, Muslims are not in power to, to bring the right institutions, the, la the right scholarships, to properly train the minds of the Muslims to understand things the way they are. That's one thing. And then on the, on, on the other hand, we need these, we need clear understandings in order to bring the kind of change that we want to bring. How do we do that, Sheikh? What, who should play this role to, to fill this gap? In fact, yes, yes, you are right. I think uh, uh, the uh, direct answer 
to this question is the Islamic political parties. Mm. If we don't have Islamic political parties who are fully aware of what's going on and fully aware of the methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in re-establishing the Khilafah and who are fully aware of what's going on in, uh, internationally, not only locally or regionally. Unle- unless we have these political, Islamic political parties who lead the Ummah to the awareness, to the, uh, I, I don't want to use the word revolution, uh, but, but after the awareness, then the change will be so imminent. Without the awareness that is, be, that is created by the, the Islamic political parties, da'wah carriers, hmm. not by scholars, not by um, um, ministries of awqaf, not by the social media. No, no. There we, we must, in addition to the activities on social media, in addition to the uh, efforts that being put in, in, in this uh, uh, renaissance process by scholars, yes, this is okay. We, we do not uh, undermine these efforts. But to make the efforts fruitful in the change process, there must be Islamic political parties like the Islamic political party of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his Sahaba were the model uh, for the Islamic political parties. So you need to look at that party, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa Hizbah, what they did, how they uh, uh, started, by uh, spreading the idea and then after some time after the say, general awareness is there then they knocked the doors of the people of uh, power people of power uh, Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knocked their doors more than 21 times. <laughs> At last, the Al Khazraj from uh, Medina, yeah. Saad ibn Mu'ad from Medina, uh, they, they decided to give the support to Rasulullah, which we call Nusra. Now, this process cannot be done unless you have Islamic political party or Islamic political parties. You, we, need to, we need to encourage this. Sheikh, but what do you have to say? The Sira is one thing. We have to come back to that 21 times. I would love to. That would be a discussion by itself. But what do you have to say to those people who say, okay, by creating more political parties, you're creating more dividing. You're dividing them, might they say. No, no, no. This is not division at all. The, 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 this is the way to... Uh, uh, to unify the Ummah because th- that was the first way to is- establish the, is- the, the Muslim Ummah then how Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam established the Ummah in the first place there were no Ummah Islamiyah there were no Islamic State it's true that there were prophets before Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who uh, uh, advocated Islam, but not the Sharia law, not the Islamic law. It's the, the advocated Tawheed, the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And they were Muslims. But Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the last and the only prophet who uh, uh, launched not only a campaign, a, a, a comprehensive a, a project, comprehensive project, starting from the scratch. No Muslims. He was the first Muslim, and then Ali, Fatima, 
علي ابو بكر علي ابو بكر خديجه right and then slowly slowly this entity this political uh, party uh, expanded and then they were influ influential in the mecca community that's why the the mecca you know big shots like abu lahab abu jahal abu sufyan abu kada they they rejected they rejected this call not because these people want to worship allah no these people are going to take our place mm. they are going to throw us out of the chair so we, uh, the, the, this procedure this process is uh, the uh, uh, the original and then you can uh, copy from this original if you copy one copy is good two copies fine three copies okay if we have 100 political parties copying this methodology then at the end of the day one of them will uh, get the nusra and then make the coup and then establish the islamic state which unifies the ummah now if you, if you, that's the, a very delicate point if you have more than one political party does not mean that you are dividing the ummah the ummah is already divided you have political uh, you need many political parties to be workers in the project of unifying the ummah so Sheikh, what do you have to say to people who say, for instance, you know, we have Ikhwan Muslimin today, we have so many Ikhwan, Hizb, so many different parties. I mean, look, what, what did the Ikhwan, a lot of people do question, okay, what did they achieve in Egypt? What did they achieve in Tunis? What did they achieve in, uh, in, in, in many, you know, Libya and things like this? Uh, uh, you know, even in uh, Syria, they were very much involved and then uh, all of it failed. Some people cl claim that the whole Arab uh, Spring that took place failed. Uh, we keep trying this and it's bringing nothing but bloodshed to us. So we don't seem to have a clear vision of what we are trying to achieve. I mean, this is the discussions that take place in, uh, you know, even subhanAllah, even sometimes you're discussing people with even in Syria and other places, they'll say, Sheikh, you know, look at the situation now. Uh, Bashar al-Assad is back in power. Uh, Syria is divided in two or three regions now. You have PKK in one area. You have uh, Americans controlling Raqqa, obviously controlling the whole region. Uh, and look, where are we now? Look at Egypt. It was worse than what it was under Mubarak. What, how, what, what is the answer? If I, if I was to ask you, I mean, as a scholar, what, what do you have to say? What do you observe? Actually, the answer is so clear. Uh, the uh, movements of Ikhwan Muslimin and other Islamic groups were not operating as Islamic political parties. They were operating as Islamic uh, groups, Islamic uh, uh, charity uh, uh, societies, but never operating as Islamic political groups. That's why they failed to uh, obtain the support of the Ummah as their leaders. And when they reached the chair, they left Islam behind. And they did not rule according to Sharia law. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give them support. So they, they lost the support from the Ummah and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, for me, is so clear. And I'm ready to, to, uh, to hold conversations and discussions with them uh, uh, and bring them to the correct methodology. 
I don't want to say that uh, uh, they failed uh, because of some mistakes. No, everyone who uh, works makes, mistake, makes mistakes. I don't want to uh, talk about mistakes. I want to talk about the uh, uh, principles. Mm, the fundamentals. Fundamentals, yes, correct. So the, the fundamental point here is that you should operate as political party. Why is the, uh, the political life in America is based on political parties? Mm. Without political, without the Democrats, the Democratic, but the Democrats, yeah. they call them, the Democrats and the Republicans. Republicans, Republicans, without the Democrats and the Republicans, there will, no, there will be no political life in America. It will be a mess. Now, people want, want leaders, leaders to, to, to lead them. Now, if the leader is sincere and on the right path, then he will succeed into uh, re, uh, 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 taking the Ummah to the Khilafah. Like Rasulullah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he introduced himself as leader to the society, as guide to the people, to the whole world, and then he started at one point and then reached at the point where he established the first Islamic State. This is how every Muslim must work if the Islamic State is uh, destroyed one day. And it was destroyed. We cannot deny that we don't have Islamic State. We cannot deny that the Khilafah of Maniya was destroyed. But we do not want to re-establish the Khilafah of Maniya or the Khilafah Abbasiya or the Khilafah Umayyah. We want to re-establish the Khilafah Rashida again. And we want to bring the train on the right path, on the right trail, which is the Khilafah. We lost the Khilafah, and Rasulullah said, then, ثُمَّ تَكُونُ خِلَافَةً عَلَى مِنْهَا جَنُبُوَةً So we are waiting to establish the second rightly guided Khilafah, according to the footsteps of Rasulullah Muhammad Wasallam. This point is completely out of the minds of the Islamic groups who operate on the uh, on the Muslim Ummah uh, platform. But, but Sheikh, is this an istihadi issue? Is this, they say that, okay, you are saying this, but this is also uh, istihad. And, uh, okay. or is it that they didn't make the proper istihad? They didn't understand the reality, yes. al-waqiya, the way it should be understood? Yes, yes. It's, it's a very good question here, is that the methodology, the methodology, is not ishtihadi. Hmm. You have to make it clear and uh, um, uh, uh, declare that, very clear that you are on the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on his methodology. I want to follow his methodology in order to reach the way that he needs. I want to follow his footsteps to reach the goal that he reached. But the details of the methodology is ishtihadi. It's subject uh -huh. to be, uh, subject to be uh, discussed on the basis of uh, the, the stages. If we say, mm. for example, we have three stages, then uh, secret lecture, and then the second one is interaction, public, and then uh, the Nusra, and then the third stage is the Hukum. Some group, political, Islamic political party, may come and say, yes, we are on the methodology, but our uh, steps, stages are 10. Hmm. Which is possible. Can, which is possible, yes. Well, why should I, why should I, uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, tell him that he's wrong? He, he, according to his ishtihad, he divided the stages into 10 stages all right as long as the first stage is according to the methodology second third until tenth is according to the methodology and then the tenth should be the re-establishing the khilafah state i don't worry about the number of stages the way that this scholar is introduced 
the uh, uh, the uh, what do you call the masira uh, uh, the uh, I don't know what the word the masira is mm. uh, the procedure the methodology the, the procedure, procedure the, 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 the process tools. the yeah. process the process as long as the process is according to the footsteps of Rasulullah I don't mind if you uh, divide them into three four five or ten or even more but you have to so prove uh -huh. your followers that this, this, this is what Muhammad saw did and here is what Muhammad reached sallallahu so Sheikh, if, if the Taliban were to come and claim that this is uh, I mean first of all uh, I will say as a very keen observer of what's happening there and, and who understands usul or understands ishtihad uh, <laughs> what position do you see the Taliban in? in Actually, the methodology? Taliban, in the methodology Taliban they committed a very fatal mistake hmm. and uh, I know very well that Hizb al-Tahrir sent a nasiha to Taliban not to negotiate with the Americans in Qatar. Mm. That was their fatal mistake. And I, 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 I don't want to discuss the ijtihad of Taliban. They may differ with us or they may agree. Agree on some, differ on some. I don't care. This is n natural. But what we should not disagree on is to put our heads in the lap of the Americans. Mm. This is haram. I don't know how come that their scholars, they said, okay, we can, the Americans, they occupy, they are enemy and they occupied their lands and they killed our uh, uh, people. Uh, people. How, 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 how come that I sit with the American delegates and agree on something with him. How? This is haram. So may, commit haram in order to reach and become a ruler. To become ruler is good. But to, to, to take the haram path to, to reach to something halal, this is not usul. No. Okay, so but in, in, in this case, if, if, if they were to come and say to you that, look, I mean, we have to bring some type of peace to Afghanistan. So there was an offer. We said, okay, fine, we will uh, accept this peace. And, and for instance, what happened in Qatar? And then they said, okay, well, now we are in power. Okay, now you are in power. Can mm -hmm. you cancel what you agreed on with the Americans in Qatar? If you can cancel it, okay, get up, shout loudly and tell the Americans get out from our air. Don't fear with us. We are now want to operate rule according to Sharia law. Don't interfere with us. If you do, we will fight you again. Let them say that. Can they do? <laughs> according to them, they say, yeah, we can say this. <laughs> They can't. No, no, no. I, I'm sure they can't. I'm sure they can't because, in fact, I, I, the second thing is which if, if I have opportunity to talk to any of the uh, Taliban uh, scholars, I will ask him about the Constitution. Hmm. Where is the Constitution that you are ruling a big country like Afghanistan? Does the Constitution say that you should stay within the borders of Afghanistan? that is drawn up by Sykes and Pico. Mm. What do you, uh, look, how do you look at Pakistan, at Pakistan? Do you look at Pakistan as enemy? Now they are fighting, by the way. Yeah, on, uh, yeah Duran on, line on, and on nonsense. Water. Yeah. Okay. You know, there are so many questions that uh, once we ask the Taliban scholars, then they should, uh, they, they, they must have answers at least. They must have answers. Subhanallah, Shaykh. Uh, yeah, yeah. If our third, both reference, terms of reference, for us and for Taliban, is Sharia. <laughs> right? 
Yes, this is a this has a this is a conversation that has to it has to go to part two, inshallah, because I, I really want to I, I wanted to understand some usuli matters, and I think a lot of people want to understand usul also because this was very interesting. You know, when you said that, okay, fine, look, methodology, uh, but we because I for me I thought even the methodology itself is usuli matter. Yani, yes, and then. Okay, so I mean, how do you differentiate between when you are looking at the methodology and when you are looking at uh, istihad within the methodology? Yeah, because the methodology is like the text. Ah, okay, meaning because the reality exists, which is the the matan is there. What did the he do? Okay, the istihad is to implementing the text on the reality. Ah, so okay. So you, what you're saying is that the methodology is the text that's there. From no. A, from A to Z, A from to the Z. word Iqra, from A, the word Iqra, A, which is A, to Z, which is Hajar. Hmm. Hijra. No, not Anas. No. Ah, the last surah that came. No, no, no. The 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 word Iqra is the first step, the first part of the methodology. Mm. The last is hijrah. Making hijrah, ah, making immigration, uh, immigrating to Medina. Im to Medina. From Iqra to Hajr is the methodology. And mm. there uh, are, uh, you know, all, all these, these things, details. right? Okay, so that's, the, that's... I call them, I call them the keys. Key, keys for the da'wah. The da'wah keys. Mafatih, al-amal da'wi. Mafatih, So just to, uh, so that I understand, and those who are listening also to this, hopefully to, for them to understand. So methodology itself here, this is text. هذا المتن يعني موجود. Yes. Uh, but it's a, a collective text. Now, from A to Z, collective. Now, istihad is to understand the text properly. Yes, but when, when you say text, people may think that the text is only ayah mm. or hadith. No, the text is complete methodology. The text, which is the complete work that is done by Rasulullah and his Sahaba Aha. from the first <laughs> point, Ikra, until this uh, Nusra and Hijra, and then until they reached Al Medina. After they reached Al Medina and they established the uh, first Islamic state, then the text is over. That's the end of the text. Then starts another text, which is the, the, the jihad, the. Uh, yeah, the Madani phase. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, you know, Hudud, Hudud, right? The Ridda. The, uh, nikah, all these, each one has its own text hmm. to be uh -huh. implemented. Yes. But the implementation of the text of the methodology is a collective collection of so many wor uh, words and activities from Ikra until Hijra. This is the text. From this text, you start making ishtihad. This is the correct usul for the da'wah carrying operation. Subhanallah. All right. Uh, there are some other questions, but I think let's end it here. Bismillah uh, ta'ala, because it's already uh, th almost three o'clock here. Uh, but we will have to uh, continue this uh, subject, Sheikh, because there are questions regarding who, for instance, there's a question here. Uh, it says who or what decides the policy in this region uh, when it comes to uh, the region of yeah, the, 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 the Asham and also the uh, Jazeera to Arab and things like this. And what do you see happening in the future? Uh, that would be an interesting discussion that we want to have, inshallah. But I think sure. you, you clarified a lot of things, uh, even for scholars who are studying this stuff, you know, who, are, who are looking into this matter of change. And the clarification regarding da'wah carrier versus uh, those who have become knowingly or unknowingly employees of the state. 
سبحان الله الله اكبر اه يا شيخي والله جزاك الله خير فور يور تايم اي دونت وات تايم از ذير ان فلسطين ناو ناو ات از ابروتشينج 11 اوكلوك سبحان الله والله جزاك الله خير فور يور تايم شيخ اند اند مي الله بوت بركه ان يور افورتس مي الله سبحانه وتعالى كونتيني تو ريز يور ستاتس بوت ان ذا دنيا اند ذا اخره اند مي الله ان شاء الله شيخ ذات وي pray to allah that allah azza shows uh, gives us the victory so that we can see it and feel it in our lifetimes inshallah rabbil alamin amen amen jazakallah khair and may allah protect you shaykh wallahi we need scholars who speak the haq the way you do and uh, may allah inshallah one day we will see you in on the member of masjid al aqsa mubarak inshallah inshallah may amen. allah accept all our good deeds amen. and forgive all our sins inshallah amen and give give victory to this ummah amen amen allahumma amen And for the rest of you, uh, inshallah, brothers and sisters who are watching uh, or who were watching this, uh, it's very important that we learn our deen from scholars. It's very important that we are able to realize and understand who scholars really are. We also have to, because in, in, the, in this market that we are in, brothers and sisters, you all are aware of what we are seeing. Unfortunately, those who are calling themselves scholars are doing the kind of vision that they are setting for this ummah where are we where are we going what kind of standards have they set what kind of vision have they given us if it's not the vision of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it's we as an ummah have to realize and understand and be aware of what's happening to this ummah if we are part of this ummah if we are part of this ummah then the struggle of this ummah is our struggle their pain is our pain the blood of the ummah wherever it's spilled you must feel it in your own heart in your own body the pain has to be as if somebody stabbed uh, uh, a khanjar yani a knife in the back of our uh, on our backs and what we are seeing with this state of israel in, in the heart of the muslims is a khanjar a poisonous dagger that has been stabbed and the whole ummah is trying as we possible way to remove the dagger and occupations are not removed by passing out candy or uh, negotiations brothers and sisters it is removed by armies you know legitimate armies that come from outside and uh, yani muslim armies who have an ideology who have a vision for the whole ummah so inshallah brothers and sisters we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our efforts make this fruitful uh, uh, that and that the ummah and the youth of this ummah and the scholars of this ummah look at this and come back and commit ourselves to this deen and to this da'wah wa jazakumullahu khairan assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh until next time صبح بدا نور ظهر نجم وشمس وقمر القى على الدنيا الدرر هذا عمر هذا عمر كل البرايا تنتظر ايامه البيض الغرر كي تستفيد من العبر هذا عمر هذا عمر لا لن تدوم الجراح بل سياتي الصباح نحن اهل الكفاح نحن فينا عمر لا لا لن تدوم الجراح بل سياتي الصباح نحن اهل الكفاح